Jim, Rick just made his comments about Chris Tillman. What did you see tonight? Well, I obviously, uh, so, you know, saw a performance that he was not happy with. Um, you know, the Orioles had had three quality starts in a row from their starters. And then all of a sudden, you know, you know, Bundy and Kashner and then, uh, you know, uh, uh, Gosman winning uh, and, be and beating Toronto. So you come up here trying to win two in a row. Uh, I mean, let's, you know, a couple of things. First of all, the Red Sox are a very good offensive team. They've, they've averaged eight runs a game here at Fenway Park. So they're very confident. They're five and one at home, uh, you know, five and one on the road. So they're playing very well. But the last thing you want to do is have a big inning and, you know, you get a one nothing lead, you know, the Tillman of old, he's not going to walk bats as good as uh, Mookie Betts is as a player. You don't want to walk him, you do. And then, you know, you get a ball up to Moreland and he doubles down the line and then you get another ball up. You know, even the sacrifice fly by J.D. Martinez was a backup slider, uh, you know, and then it, it, it culminates in the first inning with a three run home run. I couldn't even tell whether it was a change up or a fastball uh, because he cannot get over his front side to throw the ball down hills. And I used to always ask people, because, I mean, this guy was a premier right-hander until he heard a show at the end of 2016. What does Chris Tillman do? Because it's not about velocity. I mean, you know, he can throw 88 to 92 to 93, 94 on occasion. It was about deception. And, uh, I, you know, I know that Rick Dempsey has said, oh, you know, it's, it's got to be a, uh, you know, a mechanical thing. It also could be mental, uh, you know, because he's, he can't throw the ball downhill. He kind of pulls pitches instead of throwing there. And, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I kind of started pitching poorly because I had pitched close to 4,000 innings. He's only 30 years old. You know, he's pitched about 1,200 innings. He certainly should be in his prime, but uh, somehow he's going to have to get back, uh, you know, into a, a routine, whether it's go to the minor leagues. I had to do it in 83. He ended up, you know, when Rick was the MVP in the World Series, winning a game in relief. But he's got to get back on track, and it's hard to do against Houston, against the Yankees, and here in Boston against the Red Sox. Now, Jim, the obvious question is how much longer can Buck Showalter stay with Chris Tillman in the starting rotation? Well, I mean, that's not my the, the, the decision to make. You know, Cobb's going to come back and give him a, another starter. Uh, you know, Mike Wright pitched okay tonight. I mean, he, you know, he made some good pitches. Uh, you know, but again, he, here's a guy that used to throw in the mid-90s. He's throwing at tops out at 92 tonight. So, you know, again, I think the, the biggest problem the Orioles had, they... Uh, you know, they got Cobb, they got Kashner. They hoped Tillman would uh, get back to his form in, in recent years. Uh, but, again, how do you do that? And, you know, if, if he's not going to pitch, talking about Chris Tillman, is it going to be Michael Wright Jr.? You know, he you know he pitches pretty well against Houston, but the Orioles didn't score a lot of runs, and then he gets two outs in, in, in New York, and he kills the bullpen, even though the Orioles were able to win three, uh, three out of four in New York. So, you know, it's a dilemma. And uh, they don't, you know, every team usually needs five to nine starters, and that's going to be a quandary for the Orioles as we move forward. Well, as always, Jim, we appreciate your comments. We'll look forward to chatting with you again uh, tomorrow when the Orioles play at 1 o'clock against the uh, Boston Red Sox in Game 2 of this uh, four-game series.